Welcome back again folks to Mouster House Campus. This is your camper nerd Anthony Valentine. Today I'm going to be reviewing this lovely 2001 VW Auto Sleeper Topaz. This is uh, particularly rare because it's the long wheelbase with the rear wet room. Of course I'll be doing my normal in-depth review and some aerial footage helped by Dennis the drone. So let's get on to that aerial footage. Over to you Dennis. over again Dennis. Stepping now to my in-depth review of this VW Auto Sleeper Topaz. We're on a particularly windy day today and my microphone sock's not quite up to it. So we'll do a quick walk round, show you some of the features of the Topaz and then we'll step inside and go through all the bits and bobs inside. So yes, this is a 2001. Last owner has had a private number plate. It's a late 2001. One of the last of the late T4s. It's the long wheelbase, so it's got the extra long wheelbase providing room at the rear of this particular one for a wet room, so shower, full-size toilet, bathroom area. Auto sleepers are very well known for the VW conversions, prim primarily converting the Trooper model, which is the pop top, as well as the Trident, which is again similar to this, the fiberglass model. But they've decided to convert a few of the long wheel bases, quite rare. These are getting now, and this is the Topaz, so it has all the features that you would come to expect of the Auto Sleeper brand. But with being the long wheelbase, you've got the benefit of an extra room at the back, the wet room, which gives you the area for the full-size toilet, shower area, and kitchen area. Uh, bathroom area, rather. So, we have the mains hookup. Supply. Fresh water. Underneath there, you can't quite see, but there's two, we can just about see there. There's one tank there for the fresh water, and there's a tank behind it for the grey water, the waste water. Both have got taps there, just about see the two taps. And there we have the ventilation for the fridge. Generally you don't need the covers on, but it, you do always get supplied winter covers off Auto Sleeper. They just clip on there and that provides, as I say, winterisation and also in heavy winds you know that it's uh, not going to be getting drafty inside as it were. There's the Truma exhaust outlet and that's for the gas heater as well as the hot water on gas.
lovely interior, all matching as you would expect a four to sleeper. Matching front seats, some upholstery matching on the sides. So it's the 2001 VWT4 with a fairly bomb proof and indestructible 2.5 TDI turbo diesel Audi power plant. All I would suggest if you're purchasing a T4 is just check the service history as long as it's been serviced regularly and timing belt as and when required this engine is generally indestructible that's as good and desirable as it comes on a T4 and that's what you're looking for the TDI 2.5 2.4 preceding engine, nothing intrinsically wrong with it, it does its job, a little bit agricultural and a little bit um, dated now, but certainly up to the job. 1.9 is quite sluggish, not quite enough brake horsepower unless it's coupled up with a trooper and the trooper has got the folding flat top. certainly on the high top you'd be looking for a 2.4 diesel or ideally a 2.5 TDI original fire extinguisher as always it should have that's what you're looking for the auto sleeper chassis number as well as the job number that way you can just contact auto sleeper verify the date of manufacture and you can call that job number for any parts needed particular one has got a, an awning which is very handy to add a safari room on let's open the back look at that that is magnificent wet room fully wet lined waterproof rear area size Fetford toilet, flush, toilet holder, storage, Fetford cassette toilet. So in there we're always two types of chemicals, blue and pink. Blue for the loo in the cassette and pink for the stink, which is the flush. That's the caravan in rhyming. Very in there for two gas bottles. So at the floor, we've got the original water sleeper mat and the shower tray. Fully wet room lined wallpaper hello hot and cold water that just flips to one side that water goes into the basin behind the toilet into the waste water tank but of course you've also got the shower we'll just put the light on if it's there let's use it so we've got the shower we'll just put quickly with one hand but there you go one hand on the camera we can turn that round to the shower Soap dispenser, towel rail, we've got the rear wardrobe, you have got a small, there we go, wardrobe rail, one behind there and one up above here. 
So this particular one has two tables, would you believe? So that's the front table, that's the leg, for the smaller table, and it's also got the rear larger table leg, which I'll show you in the front compartment. So there's the winter covers I'm just telling you about for the vents for the fridge. That's for your hot water and heating exhaust winter cover. And you've got your gas pipes there. So if you didn't want to go outside to access and switch the gas off on the main connector on the gas bottle, you could just come through here and isolate them individually. More space and cupboard there. So we've got an extra shower curtain there. And on the roof, if you can just see there, that cup pops down like that and that will pop up. On the toilet, on the cassette system on a Fetford, you have a gauge here, so green is what we like to see. That means the cassette's empty. And of course, as it's getting filled, it'll start to come in a red bar. So let's now step inside the side door to the leisure department. get out of the wind. Wonderful. Just a quick span out. Let's put some lights on. Plenty of reading lights. So I'm sitting down now in the front passenger seat, which is swiveled round. As you can see, I can put my feet up and get comfortable. There's the driver's rear sofa. The rear forward facing seat with a three point seat belt. So let's talk about seat belts and the legislation. So the law states at current, when this video was published, that pre October 2007, it is completely legal and acceptable to travel in the back of a motorhome with no seat belts. Only after October 2007, you have to have seat belts. So any motorhome caravan earlier than October 2007, the law is very clear. If there is a seat belt fitted, you must wear it. And obviously that's what we would advise. But if there's no seat belts, you do not have to wear it. Same in the United Kingdom as for trains, buses, coaches, there's lots of vehicles with no seat belts in. Obviously that's your own choice. But pre-October 2007, the current legislation before this video or when this video was published, there is no legal requirement to wear a seat belt in the rear when traveling if a seat belt is not fitted. So if you had Say we had four people traveling in this, of course, we'd have one, two forward facing at the front. You would have the third passenger would have to sit in that seat belt. But if there was a fourth passenger, they're perfectly within the law to sit on that sofa. Obviously that's up to you to decide, but that's the law as it state, states at the moment. So there's the rear doors for the bathroom, so we'll just slide those to one side. Clip into place. Typical auto sleeper quality. And there we have it. So you've still got access to the rear door. So I'll just step into the wet room and then span out to show you the front living quarters. Beautiful. The 
you've got two tables as it were you've got the large table leg that goes in there and that's stored up here in the corner there on the top shelf on the passenger side that leg goes into there and access to that we'll just unclip these rear sofa panel and that access to there that's the big large wooden table the original one there that is quite large so that fits here so you can have it sideways on or lengthwise of course you can use the table leg the smaller one that I just showed you in the rear wardrobe and that's uh, let's undo this seat belt to get access to it so you just put that neatly in its slot there unhook these little clips and there is the second smaller table Typical auto sleeper quality solid wood. So that can spin round there, and you can spin that round either or to forward face the rear, or the forward face rather, the passenger seat when it swivel round in the captain's seat area. The driver's seat is also captain swivel on this topaz. So it has a lever just on the side of the seat on that side, just unhook the lever and you can swivel that round. So that will then create, you can either have that swivel around and that swivel around so you've got a comfortable seating area or your feet up to enjoy the view at the front. Bedding arrangements, you can make as two singles. So this area, that can come out to here, fully flush. That folds forward and there's three little, two little filling cushions for there and there and there's a filling cushion that here that fits near the gear stick and would you believe that creates a five foot wide bed, wait for it, this side that seat can go a little bit closer to the dashboard because it hasn't got a steering wheel of course, so that side would you believe is six foot five, this side is just about six foot or just a shade under so a six foot five person can sleep comfortably on that side and a six foot person on this side so you can have it as two singles or of course one large super queen size that's what auto sleeper experts at creating the best living space out of a vehicle to create that from this floor space and footprint of just a VWT4 is quite incredible. So we've got the space, the storage area. There, there, there's the three infill cushions, all matching, of course. That one sits behind the driver's seat, just sits in nicely there. That's the infill for here, and the middle one that sits nicely and creates a space there. Lines, linets to all the windows. So generally these blinds, well they are all on auto sleepers anyway, they're foil lined on the back. What that means is it'll keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So generally the curtains at the side really are just for cosmetic. They do look nice but generally you don't need to use the curtains because of course you're just pulling the blinds up and you've got total blackout and privacy on all the windows the only curtains most people generally use myself included when I go away is the front curtains so you've got the front curtains you just pull the blinds down there and then that will still leave all the front cabin space as living space when the curtains are closed at night more reading lights Plenty of cupboard space as always. So under the side sofa, very large, well constructed drawer as you can see. And that there.
hides the hot water so you can operate the hot water so we just put it on the on the that's gone on green the clickers click the solenoid in the hot water system and then in a few seconds time the pilot light will take and that will heat the hot water on gas so if you're wild camping alternatively if you're plugged in to the mains hookup the 240 mains then you can switch this on of course i'm not i'm not plugged in at the moment to the mains where i'm carrying out this video but if it was we just click that on and the red light would come on there and that would heat you hot water on mains so that's the lever we just pull that lever like so and that will bring this bed out to the side on these two legs on the rear seat the forward facing seat we have a lever here so that lever comes up here that way then will forward to there this here will lift up there and go on the, the latch on there of the passenger seat and that will create that six foot five bed We've got a nice space there to tuck in the seat belt. All matching upholstery. So above here, if you're on mains hookup, you've got a main socket. You've got a 12 volt socket that you can use when wild camping. Any accessories you can use the plug there. It's got a TV and this has got an Omnimax TV aerial on the roof. And there's the booster cables as well as the booster pack. Another mains hookup. The heating system, we've got the Truematic gas blown uh, heating system. So we just put the pilot light on here. You might have heard on the microphone, not sure whether it's picked up, but that's clicked in now. That's on green, so that's going to light up shortly. We're on the big flame, not the small flame. And then that will blow nice hot uh, through here. And that doesn't take long. And if you just heard that click, that's the pilot light just lit up. And that will be, yes, that's just starting to come warm now. Another mains lead here. And let's switch that off. So come into the kitchen area. So we'll just pull fixtures look at the quality the craftsmanship auto sleeper this was manufactured in 2001 so it's 18 years young and still well it's almost factory fresh draining board hot and cold water down above the kitchen area or the sink so we've got storage underneath there and this has still got the original auto sleeper crockery so the plates the small plates the original cups and dishes and just lovely fit 18 years old and still fitting the day it was born as nice and tight as it should do so above here we've got the control panel nice straightforward so we've got the master switch off so we'll just put that on and that means now all the leisure facilities are powering up off the leisure battery which is just under uh, the leisure uh, just under the cooker here I'll show you that shortly. So we'll test the battery. So the battery's on green and we'll test the water. So that means it's quarter full of fresh water. So we've got the pump on and off. We can switch that off now. And we've got the lights on and off. So more kitchen space above the gas hobs. Let's have a look at the kitchen. We're just going to put 
the chrome panels up. That will then leave it all nice and safe for the burner hobs. So we've got two burner hob. A bit tricky to see in the sunlight here, but that's a nice blue flame. That's what we're looking for. Anything other than a blue flame, switch it off, give it a quick clean, remove this, blow out the dust, and it should be blue again. If not, take it into your local service. Same there, we've got the grill underneath here. Cuttle redraw. Lots of cupboard space. We've got the mains fuse box there, as well as the leisure battery, so everything's easily accessible. Under the sink, we have an extra cupboard space to utilize, to take advantage of, as well as the all important wine drawer. So you put your bottles of wine under here, as well as any cutlery above. Smooth operation of that after 18 years. So we've got the three way fridge. This is an Electrolux. Auto Sleeper have been using this fridge for a long time now. Three ways means it was able to use it on 12 volt when you're driving, mains when you're connected at home or on a campsite, as well as gas when you're wild camping. So when you're wild camping, you switch the igniter there, that'll spark, we hold that in, we hold it in for a few seconds. That has actually stopped clicking now. So that signifies and lets us know that the pilot light is lit. We still hold that in for about five seconds duration in total, let go. And if it stopped clicking, that means the pilot light is taken. And that's correct. We can just about, just about see that pilot light there. Little blue flame there. Just a little bit of advice. A lot of people, people, as soon as the pilot light is taken or lit, people turn off the sparker. That's a mistake. You must always leave the sparker on when you're on gas. The reason for that is there's a safety. So if the gas pilot light is blown out by a gust of wind, automatically this will reignite that pilot light so you're not going to have a little little bit of gas leaking out it's still not being known that's any problem because of course auto sleepers everything's as a secondary uh, safety device they have two lots of ventilation underneath the fridge as well as at the rear but let's be extra safe always leave that igniter on so i'm going to demonstrate now the gas pilot being blown out and there you can hear it's sparking again. And that's attempting to relight it. So we'll just switch that off now. And there we have it. I'll just do a little span over and a recap over some of the advice I've given you folks about buying campers and motorhomes. The best advice I can give you, if it's too good to be true, it normally is. Always ask and speak to the owner if they will know me, communicate and liaise with you via email or text. That sets alarm bells. Always ask as many questions as you like. In the United Kingdom, with the registration number plate, you can go on the government website and check out all the previous MOTs, all the history. Ask the owner how long they've had it. Have they a genuine reason for selling it? The more questions you can ask, the more information and the better, more informed decision you can make on a large and expensive purchase. Better to be safe. Also, be very wary of people asking you to meet them halfway to view a camper and hand over lots of money. I would always want to visit them at their premises or if they're a bona fide dealer or trader uh, and they can come to you and they've got the necessary paperwork and identification, no problem again, but just be safe.
just check the mileage checks up with the service history does the mileage and service check the shininess of the steering wheel lots of little things to bear in mind I'll just do a little slow walk around of the outside and then we'll give Dennis his last little bit of filming and I will see you shortly Yes, it's windy again, folks. Hopefully, Dennis, you're going to be able to manage in this wind. Over to you. again for that little bit of footage Dennis I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed making it of this 2001 VW Auto Sleeper Topaz any comments are welcome down below or if you click that subscribe button you'll be notified of any new forthcoming videos and reviews or you're welcome to contact me on 0798 526 1078 by call or text and I will endeavour to help you with your inquiries or you can alternatively visit me at www.camperner.com Till the next time, from me and Dennis, thanks for watching.